Starting on April 8th, Governor Kathy Hochul will have a second opportunity to pick a nominee to lead the state's top court. Her first choice to be the chief judge of New York, the Honorable Hector LaSalle, was rejected by the state Senate earlier this year, prompting the state commission on judicial nominations to offer a new list of contenders in March. To discuss the second list of nominees, as well as other movements that are likely to happen on the court, we're joined by the ghostwriter for John Grisham, Vin Bonventry, a professor with Albany Law School and author of the New York Court Watcher blog. Welcome back to the Capitol Press Room, Vin. Well, thank you so much. I'm not sure how you learned about that, but that's supposed to be a secret and I get paid under the table. Well, I apologize for breaking the news. So so turning to uh, the topic at hand, the governor has seven names to choose from. All indications are she's only eyeing the three associate justices from the State Court of Appeals who are on the list from the State Commission on Judicial Nominations because she has subsequently advanced the measure that would let her fill a vacancy on the court due to an associate judge becoming chief judge with candidates from the chief judge list. So following that line of thought, who are the three current Court of Appeals justices who appear to be up for the chief judge job? The acting chief judge, Anthony Conataro, uh, he's been on the court now a few years. He was the last appointee of Governor Andrew Cuomo. So he's one of the current sitting members. And then there were two other sitting members on the court who apparently within a month or so became qualified to be chief judge, and they weren't qualified when the commission came out with its first list. And those two are Judge Rowan Wilson, who's an Andrew Cuomo appointee, and he was actually on a previous list for chief judge when Janet DeFiore was ultimately selected by Andrew Cuomo. And then there's Judge Shirley Troutman, who actually is Governor Hochul's only appointment to the current Court of Appeals. Shirley Troutman is from Buffalo. Apparently, she's well known by Hochul. And to be tribal about it, she was a graduate of Albany Law School. So So were Troutman and Wilson not on the list of chief judge nominee candidates that the governor had to choose from uh, at the end of 2022? David, five out of the seven on the current list we're not on the first list. I'm not sure how exactly that happens. But I mean, I've been told that there are at least two from the original list that did not apply this time. Certainly Hector LaSalle, <laughs> who was rejected by the Senate, he didn't. He's not a glutton for punishment. Right. And uh, Judge Oing, he didn't apply either. With regard to both of those, remember, progressive groups and the very uh, progressive senators opposed both of those. So, I mean, Hector LaSalle, there's no reason for him to be applying again. And Judge Oing, it could be he saw the writing on the wall. On the other hand, you know, Anthony Conataro, I mean, I think the writing's on the wall for him, too. I mean, he was part of the uh, four judge more conservative block under Chief Judge DeFiori. I just can't even imagine that he would get through the Senate. But uh, I give him credit. You know, he's putting his neck out there and uh, he's on the list again. And how about Associate Judge Rowan Wilson? Is he someone who might be confirmable by Senate Democrats who control the majority in the state Senate? Oh, well, not- I, I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. I would imagine they would be euphoric. And, and the reason for that is not only on the basis of merit. And, you know, look, I hate to break it to you, David. I know you're young, but uh, merit is only a very small part of the entire selection process. Shocked to learn there's gambling in this establishment. You know, we do get judges on the high court and on lower courts who turn out to be, you know, pretty exceptional. But that's only one of the small reasons why they're chosen. You know, they're chosen for ideological reasons. They're chosen for uh, political reasons, crony reasons, friendship reasons. But Rowan Wilson, who's absolutely brilliant, an appointee of Andrew Cuomo, although he had been on lists, I think, about six times before Andrew Cuomo finally appointed him. He's absolutely brilliant. And the thing is, he has been disagreeing consistently 
with the trend of the court over the last few years to be, you know, more pro-prosecution, less sympathetic to the rights of the accused, less sympathetic to workers, less sympathetic to individuals who were innocently injured. He's, uh, you know, what we colloquially call uh, a much more liberal judge than the court has been the last few years. And like I said, also, there would be great merit to appointing him. I think he, as chief judge, would elevate the prestige and the prominence of the Court of Appeals immediately. So the the credentials, though, that you laid out, which make him particularly attractive to the Senate Democratic majority, seems like it also could disqualify him for Governor Kathy Hochul, though, right? Um, I don't know. I mean, Governor you, you, Hochul... You, when you think about her ideology and what she's sort of pursued on, on the public safety front, what she's prioritized, you don't think that he would be too far to the left for her? Well, no. I, and uh, I, I don't think you could accurately label Rowan Wilson a a lefty He's so what's kind the of perception? a traditional liberal. You know, he's kind of a traditional liberal, not probably much different than uh, uh, than Governor Hochul. You know, he's got phenomenal credentials. You know, he he was a, a partner, a senior partner at the most prestigious law firm in the world, Cravath, Swain and Moore. He's a beautiful writer. He's uh, like I said, he's he's brilliant. I, I, you know, he would be he would be terrific as a chief, but he's not the only one on the list that would be terrific. You know, Shirley Troutman, who's also currently on the list, who wasn't qualified several weeks ago, but now she is qualified to be chief judge. I was just in Buffalo and I was speaking, you know, privately to a uh, recently retired Court of Appeals judge who knows uh, Shirley Troutman very well, very familiar with her work on the appellate division, fourth department out there. He was just gushing about her. And, you know, he didn't have to do that. You know, we were in private conversation. This guy doesn't gush about everybody, but he just thought she was terrific. And everything I've ever heard about Shirley Troutman is that she really is terrific and she would make a fine chief judge. Well, from what we're hearing uh, in the Capitol is that Troutman is the favorite to be the next chief judge based on uh, her ties to the Western New York area, as well as being both palatable to Senate Democrats, but also being at least not being perceived to be as liberal as someone as Wilson. What do you think about her chances to be the governor's choice as chief judge? No, I I think uh, what you've been hearing is absolutely correct. I mean, you know, if you had to gamble, you would say that she is the favorite because uh, Governor Hochul knows her. They're both from Buffalo. Uh, they both seem to be, you know, moderately uh, liberal. Uh, Troutman on the court, although she has disagreed and dissented against Uh, Some of the rulings over the last few years, the very conservative rulings over the last few years, she certainly has not been together with the more liberal, the most liberal judges on the court, Rowan Wilson and Jenny Rivera. She hasn't been with them all the time. So, yeah, she's probably more moderately uh, liberal. And again, because Hochul successfully got her through the Senate the first time, and Hochul knows her, she's got to be considered the front runner. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So traditionally, if the governor was to choose an associate judge uh, to fill a chief judge vacancy, how would the replacement for the associate judge be chosen? And how could an associate judge be chosen if legislation that is kicking around Albany uh, becomes the law of the land? Well, of course, under the law, regardless of this proposal, under the law, each time there is a vacancy, the nominating commission's procedures are triggered. Well, there's only one vacancy now, and that vacancy is for chief judge. If Governor Hochul picks one of the currently sitting judges of the Court of Appeals, that then creates a vacancy. That then triggers the nominating commission's procedures to come up with another list. I mean, I think the proposal is pretty clearly unconstitutional. 
Well, let's let's talk about the proposal though first before we critique it. You know, basically, my understanding is that essentially, if a vacancy was to come up in the circumstances that we've outlined, she could then essentially pick the next associate judge from the remaining people on the chief judge list. That, and that's right. That that's what the proposal is. Although the state constitution and the state statute make it pretty clear that for each vacancy, there is a list. And the other thing, as a matter of practicality, the individuals who applied for this list applied to be chief judge. A vacancy for associate judge would get different applicants, applicants who wouldn't necessarily want to be chief judge. And there would be some who might want to be chief judge, but wouldn't necessarily want to be an associate judge. In fact, I think Judge Elizabeth Gary, who's the presiding justice of the third department appellate division here in Albany, our intermediate court, I think she made it pretty clear that, you know, she would want to be considered for chief judge, but not necessarily for associate judge. It seems to me like it would be a very, very different list and there would be very different applicants applying for, you know, associate judge than are applying for chief judge. And that question of constitutionality has been raised and kicked around Albany a bit already. So who would be the ultimate court to weigh in on the constitutionality of something like this? Would it be the state court of appeals? Sure, it would have to be the state court of appeals. I mean, the final rulings on anything having to do with New York law would be the New York Court of Appeals. So they would have to rule on it. But, you know, to tell you the truth, I can't imagine it's going to go that far because there are so many who have already said that, you know, this proposal would not be constitutional. Well, finally, any thoughts on the Court of Appeals and its approach, at least that we've seen so far in 2023 under Judge Canataro? Does it seem like it's business as usual? Are they hedging their bets in terms of the scope and types of cases they're taking on? What would you say are the kind of the hallmarks of this court so far, uh, you know, at this point in 2023? Well, so far, um, the court has continued to take very few cases, very few cases. So, for example, this month, the court will come to Albany. You know, the judges live in their hometowns and then they come to Albany. They'll be in Albany hearing cases for three days, you know, in the good old days, you know, which weren't very good. But formerly, you know, the judges would come to Albany and they would stay in Albany for two weeks and they would hear, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight cases a day. The court is going to hear like three or four cases a day in only three days for the month. So the court continues to hear very, very few cases under acting uh, Chief Judge uh, Conataro. The other thing is the court is holding off on a number of cases that are extremely important, that would be controversial, you know, and they're rescheduling oral arguments on those particular cases. So the court really is in a holding pattern. Now, look, the the company line is going to be, oh, yeah, they're just continuing to do their work as they always do. But we all know that's not true. I mean, that's almost impossible for human beings to just continue to do to work the way they have been working when they don't even know who their chief is going to be. They don't even know what the composition of the court is going to be in the next couple of months, especially if the governor chooses a sitting judge and then fills the vacancy, which that has created. Right. So it's going to be a different court within the next few months. It's probably going to be a very different court. Well, we've been speaking with Vin Bonventry. He is a professor with Albany Law School and author of the New York Court Watcher blog. Vin, thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. Always great to be with you, David. Thank you. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by the New York State AFL-CIO, a federation of 3,000 unions fighting for working people by keeping New York State union strong. Visit unionstrongny.org for more information.